question two. Okay, this question is uh, to get the activation energy uh, between the HCl and the sodium disulfate, uh, and is follow this equation, uh, this reaction. Uh, HCl react with disulfate will form the sodium correct salt, H2O and sulfur and SO2. So this is the one that we need to observe. Okay, the solid sulfur form is uh, seen as a white suspension and uh, of course it will block the uh, marking later, later we discuss. The reactants are mixed and the time t of a fixed quantity of sulfur uh, to be formed is recorded. A measure of initial rate of the reaction is 1 over t. So the concentration for this thiosulfate is uh, 0 0.1 and HCl is 0 0.5. Okay, these are the steps uh, for the reaction. Okay, step 1. A thermostatically controlled water bath is set up. Right, means uh, we have a uh, temperature control water bath which to uh, make sure the temperature is always uh, constant. Step 2. Uh, 1 cm cube conical flask label A and second conical flask uh, which uh, label B. And uh, we put 10 cm cube of uh, 0 0.1 mole per dm cube sodium disulfate into the A and place in the water bath. After that, we add 10 cm cube of 0 0.5 mole per dm cube HCl into the B, plus B. Both conical flask with the solution now put into the water bath. Wait for 10 minutes. Uh, it's actually to make sure the temperature of the reagent uh, reach the thermal e equilibrium with the water bath means same temperature with the water bath. Okay, step six. The flask A is removed from the water bath and placed on the uh, white towel uh, marked with a black cross, something like this. So the content of uh, flask B are added to the flask A and the timer start immediately. So means uh, B add to A, right? And start the time timer. The timer is stopped when this black cross means this one is no longer visible. Uh, the observer will observe from top, right? Observe from top. Um, after that, when this uh, black cross no longer visible, then the timer stops. Okay, after that, the time is recorded. Okay, part A. Suggest a reason why it is necessary to wait for 10 minutes in step 5. As I told you just now, uh, is to make sure the solutions uh, reach thermal equilibrium with the water bath. Right? Make sure the solution of uh, in the plus A and B are at the same temperature with the water bath. Okay, part B. The procedure does not mention how a value of the temperature of the mixture during the reaction is obtained. Okay, part 1. State the temperature measurements that should be taken at each, which state uh, in the procedure that should be taken. Uh, this one is uh, quite straightforward. Okay, in order to know the temperature of the reaction mixture, uh, so it's uh, of course better we take the one temperature before the reaction start before we mix the uh, flask A and B after that we take another temperature when the cross no longer visible means uh, when the uh, when we stop the timer so before the timers uh, started and after the reaction stop right so we take two temperatures Okay, for this, this means uh, for the step 7, step 8. Okay, part 2. State how to use the temperature measurements to determine an accurate value for the temperature of the mixture during the reaction. 
very easy since we already uh, get the two uh, temperature so we just uh, calculate the mean temperature during the reaction means uh, we just sum up these two and divide by two right so we get the mean temperature for the reaction okay part C a student uh, carry out the procedure at the three different temperature and records the measurement uh, in the table 2.1 complete the table 2.1 and uh, make sure the one over time is uh, four decimal places. Uh, this is quite easy. Uh, temperature uh, from degree C to Kelvin, just plus 273. Plus 273. So we will get all these values. Okay, one over T, one over the time. So uh, we'll get this one. Uh, again, make sure it's four decimal places. So you get 0 0.0057 and uh, 0 0.01. 09. Okay, the last one is 0 0.0161. Okay, after that, uh, part D. Uh, this value is not really uh, related to the graph. Uh, this is the one that need to use to plot the graphs. Okay, a second student carry out the procedure at six different temperature, uh, and uh, the data given in the this uh, table 2.2, so it's one over the temperature, one over T. Uh, so we have all these values and of course now we have log 1 over time and we have the, all these value, negative values so use all these uh, values to plot the graphs here uh, you can just follow and you can try uh, by your own uh, you should get something like this okay let's see how it looks like something like this huh? you should get uh, a straight line right negative gradient uh, of course, you need to draw the best fit uh, because it said uh, you need to draw the line of best fit, right? Okay, so after you plot uh, uh, the this, uh, okay, follow this, uh, the table 2.2. So you should get, uh, okay, this line. And after that, you need to calculate the gradient, right? Okay, so... Okay, make sure the best fit uh, you make sure it's balanced right uh, yeah and uh, okay part two determines the gradient of uh, your line of best fit state the coordinates of both points you use in the calculation uh, and uh, after that the gradient must be 3 accept okay remember when you try to get the coordinate you try not to get from the table because uh, all the values in the tables it might not really in the best fit line so again for the best fit line you need to make sure uh, is passed through as many plots as possible and make sure it's balanced right uh, so for this one uh, you can choose your own uh, coordinates okay for my coordinates from the best fit lines yeah, uh, I got these two Okay, when you when you put the coordinates here the examiner will check so whether these coordinates uh, is really from the lines or not so after that uh, to get the gradient it's very easy we just use the delta y over delta x so means uh, we use the y here okay x y eh? okay we use the negative 1.04 minus uh, negative 2.14 over 0 0.00296 minus 0 0.00342 okay so eventually we'll get this again it must be 3 sf so uh, for mine i get this one then i make it to 3 sf so it's a negative 2340 kelvin okay after that part three uh, so equations given and we can use this one to calculate the activation energy Okay, so first we know that in the graph is uh, the log 1 uh, over time versus the 1 over uh, t, the temperature. So, uh, okay, this one, therefore we know that the gradient is actually this one. Right, because it's uh, log 1 over time, 
right? And this is a one over t. So this is a gradient. So we use this one with the values that we calculate in the part two, right? So we get this relation: negative uh, zero point four three four times the activation energy over the r. This one you can get from the table. Uh, is eight point three one. Okay, equal to the gradient. So eventually the activation energy will be positive, right? So uh, you can use your own value. Uh, so my one is uh, 2340 times uh, 8.31 over 0 0.434. Uh, there, there is a tricky part here. Um, after you calculate, the EA will be in Joule per mole. So you need to convert to kilo Joule per mole. So means uh, for mine, I get 44805. This one need to divide by 1000. And uh, it will be uh, this one in kilojoule per mole. 44.8 kilojoule per mole. Part 4. Use your graph uh, to state whether the result from the experiment are reliable. Justify your answer. Uh, from this graph, uh, what I can say is uh, quite okay uh, because most of the plots uh, is quite near to the line. Uh, so just say yes. Right. So yes, most points are lying on the line of best fit. Okay, part E, suggest a change to one control variable that the student could make so the, the time measured for the given temperature is shorter means uh, to make the reaction faster right so uh, the best way is uh, we must make sure the concentration use is higher when the concentration of the reactants is higher means it uh, will be faster right uh, so means the precipitate form will be faster okay. so that's all thank you